We are painting a landscape in watercolor today. Start with a photograph of a landscape and I'm going to show you a shortcut to draw it on your paper. All right, a way that you can trace your picture so you don't have to draw it freehand is just to tape it to a window with light coming through and take your, pic your paper right over the top of it and you can trace the drawing right onto your page. I'm going to transfer this onto another piece of paper. You have two ways to do it. What, the first one is to turn your picture towards the sunlight. I'm on a window, and that way you can see the back of it. Take a piece of tracing paper and start to trace. And the reason we're drawing it backwards is because what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over on top of our paper. Just do this really quickly so that the pencil lines are transferred to your page, and then you just push down over those lines with another pencil, and it transfers the information for you. What I'm using today is my paint brushes and some paint, depending on what kind of paint you have. Watercolor paint is, comes in many different shapes and sizes. I have tubes that I'm going to use today, or you can use a watercolor set, a palette, or if you don't have a palette, you can use a styrofoam or paper plate, which will work perfectly. Paper towels, two containers of water, one for clean water and one to wash your brushes, and an extra piece of paper that you can test your paint on before you put it onto your artwork. When I look at my picture, I see that there's a lot of green and yellow and some red and orange and brown, so I have put those out on my palette. If you have a set that has them arranged already, you can see that most of those colors are available in the, the set that you have. I'm going to start with the big areas of color that I see in my picture. I see a lot of green and some yellow. Um, and down here I see a lot of red, but I think I'm going to stay with the green and the yellow first. And I'm just going to put some water with my paint and work in a pretty large brush because the areas that I see are a big area. So I might want to use a brush that's about this size. My picture is not too large, so I don't need a really large brush. But I'm going to start by looking at this and trying to figure out what colors do I see. Now I notice that this is a brown color, but it's a very light brown color. So I don't want to draw this too dark. So what I think I will do is just put a little bit of brown and see if that brown matches. I can see that it's a little bit darker than my tree. So maybe what I want to do is to wash out my brush and put a little yellow with that brown. That might brighten it up a little bit. And now I see it's a little lighter brown. So I want to start with my lighter colors and add my darker colors as I go. I'm going to just lay this in and through here. This is not the color it will stay, but for now this will be a nice color to lay down underneath so that later on when I add more color to it, this will be um, the lightest color that I leave and I won't have a lot of white showing. Now if I look at this picture, the lightest colors that I see are just up in here. So I'm going to leave those alone for now and just leave a white area that I can go back in. And you can test your color if you're not sure. I have a little extra on my page, so I can test it right here. Or I can test it on my extra piece of paper. Because I've drawn it, I can see at this point the drawing lines to help me stay in the areas that I want to paint for the tree and not go outside of them at this point. Watercolor paint, the more paint you put on your brush, the darker it gets. You see this is very light, but if I wanted to do a little bit more dark, I would just add more of my watercolor paint and less water. But I'm going to just focus on painting this very, very light for my tree. Next I see there's a lot of yellow in here, so I'm going to dip my brush and see if that yellow works. When I compare it to my picture, it's a little bit too yellow if I look at the two. So I would like to make it a little more warm. So maybe what you can do is add a little bit of orange in there. As you can see, this is another warmer yellow. And this is more 
to what I want in my picture. So I'm going to just put a very small, light layer of the yellow color. Now you look at your picture and try to figure out what are the main colors that you see and the biggest areas that you see of that color. And I want you to paint them in in a very light wash. That means more water than there is paint. And be able to, you should be able to see your drawing through that. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add some more colors and some more details. So go ahead and look at your painting or your drawing and figure out from your photograph where you want to put your color and put that in. When I'm looking at the texture of my leaves, I notice that, that some of them are lighter or darker. They have a pattern to them that looks like little dots in a way. So when I'm painting the area that I'm going to put my leaves in, I try to start to think about that. And maybe in some of my areas of painting, I might want to put a little bit darker paint and a lighter paint. But I still want to cover this section with all of the yellow that I see in my photograph. This part of the drawing and painting process you're going to do and then you'll also add more colors over the top of it. Now it just depends on what you're painting. Some of your painting um, reference may not have little dots. It may just be a solid area of color if you're painting a landscape or if you're painting animals, depending on what you're deciding to paint. Today we're looking at landscapes, but this applies to anything that you choose to paint. So the paint doesn't have to be exactly the same because again, like I said, you want to leave some areas of light in there. In this case, because I want to add some background to these yellow leaves. And also, I might want to add some darker leaves after this part of this painting dries. And even if I color over here, this section of the photograph has some green leaves, but because yellow is a light color, if I put the darker green color over the top of it, it won't matter. I won't see the original yellow color. Continue on painting in these big areas of color. This area is going to be yellow in my painting. This area here is going to be green. And then I have a lighter green here and a green in this area. And then I may paint a little green down here and then some yellow again. If you look at my photograph, you'll notice that there's green, yellow, light green, green, a little green down here, and this is yellow and red. But I'm going to start with my yellow because yellow is a lighter color than red, and I'll lay the red on top of it. So as you look at the picture, you will see that a lot of my colors are colored in, but they're much lighter. I'm going to just color this last area in. And you notice that there's a lot of red and yellow there, but I still see green as well. So I'm going to make a really light, light yellow green and just lay that down. And I'm just using the edge of my brush to draw a line here. As you're painting, if you want to put a little water on your, your paper and then put your paint, it also moves around. I'll put a little darker so you can see. gives you a nice texture and it helps the paint to move. Whenever you're working with watercolor and you want the, the paint to move, you just add a little bit of water. I'm making this really light. All the colors are very light because I'm going to have this as an undercut color or underpainting that I can add more detail to. So I have my greens. I have a little bit of my oranges that I put here. I can continue to add with a smaller brush. As you can see, I'm working with my green, a little bit of my yellow, and I'll add some more green leaves right up in this area here, a little darker. So they're easy to see against the yellow backdrop. And the darker the leaves, the more that they stand out and look closer to you. But at this point, it doesn't matter. Some are dark or some are light. We're going to put more color over the top of them.
When your paper is still wet and you put water over the top of it, it blends together with the other colors that are there or the water set there. But as your paper dries, you'll see that the paint tends to just stay where you put it. So right now we're working with paint that is in large areas. It also doesn't need to be very precise, so you can use quite a bit of water. The less water that you use, the more the paint stays put when you put it down. So right now we don't really want the paint to be too precise because it's just an underpainting. So I would just put a lot of water with my paint when I'm painting. And if you make a mistake in some areas, remember this is just the first step. And I put some colors down here that I really don't want. So I wanted to show you how you can also kind of erase. Let's say I put those colors there and they're too bright for me. If I take my paper towel, I can just pick them back up, just like that, before they dry. So we're going to let this dry, and then we'll come back to the next step. I've painted in my base colors and let them dry. Now I'm going to start to add the detail to this painting. I would like to start on this side because I don't want to put my hand in wet paint. So I'll start by coloring these areas in with more detail, and then I will work my way over. I'm going to start with the trunk of the tree because I think that's a really a nice area for you to see me adding details to get an idea. Now I have brown here, but you can make brown by adding blue. Put some blue down here for you. And adding orange. So sometimes orange and blue will make a nice brown color. So if you don't have brown, you'll notice that this makes a nice brown color that you can use as well. That's just orange and blue. I'd like mine to be a little bit darker, and if you have brown and it's not dark enough, you can also add blue to it, and that'll make it a darker shade of brown. And I'll notice that I have, in this area here, a branch that comes in and is very dark because it's in the shadow. So I'm gonna just draw that branch in and again, if I want to test my paint, I can test it over here. It's dark on the bottom. It's a little dark for me, so I can just use the paint that's there and bring that into the other side. I'm going to make the texture of the tree almost as though I'm drawing some of it with my paintbrush. Now you can do the same thing with grass, or you can draw if you're doing flowers, you can do some of the small petals. If you want to draw in some textures on the different things that you're painting from, just look and see if there's a place that you can use this technique. You put a little paint on the tip of your brush, you don't put any more water so that the paint stays where you put it, and you almost use the technique of, of drawing, to draw in the details, like the texture of this tree. This so also helps me to start to add the texture to create a feeling that there's a shadow on one side of the tree. If you look at it right now, you can almost see that the light is coming from this side over and this part of the tree is going into the shadow. So what I'd like you to do is find an area in your own painting and see if you can use this technique to add some more detail into it. As you see, my tree has taken on more shape. It looks more three-dimensional because of the dark and the light and the textures. I'm working in this area here. I don't want to bring too much dark into the area that my leaves are in because I'd like my leaves to overlap some of the tree branches. So what I'm going to do is to add some more detail just to show you. The tip of my brush is very thin so I can go and I can draw some of this detail into the bark. As I move into the light areas I don't want my detail to be as dark as it is in the dark area so I might create a, a thinner paint, which is, means more water, and draw in my details in the lighter areas. So the dark areas, I would use a dark paint with more paint than water, and that will make this look as though that is in the shadows. I can add my details using that darker paint. 
in the more light areas, I'll use a paint that has a lighter shade to it and just paint the details very lightly so that my tree has both light and dark areas. I've added details in the tree, so now I'm going to go over how to do leaves and that way you can have that texture to, to play with as well. You notice that my leaves are different colors of yellow and orange and red and in the background they're green. Now I've painted in the green and it's very soft because as things move away from the foreground to the background there's not as much detail in them. So what I would do first is continue to fill in some of these green areas with just a little bit of contrast as you can probably see there's a little bit of contrast in through here but not so much that it starts to come forward more than the, the front leaves that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my green and start to lay in and fill in these areas that I see that have the white paper showing. And I'll just put a little green and some, some yellow in there and have the different colors and different textures fill in that background. It's not very intense or saturated color. It's more softened, what we're used to seeing when we're watercolor painting. And that helps to create this feeling of depth because as things move away from you, you see less detail. Now I painted my tree and I have some branches. I didn't paint all of them because I want some of my leaves to go over the top of the branches. So I left some areas just open. And then after I'm done painting in all my leaves, I can go back and add some more um, branches if I want to. But at this point, I don't want to put too many in there because it, it will mean that I can't add leaves overlapping the branches. So I do see a little bit of orange, so maybe I'll just put a few dabs of orange here and there. And that's what you want to do at this point. If you have some background areas that just need to be filled in, you can add more color on top of them. And in the areas that are dry, when you add color, the, the paint won't move around because of the dry surface that it's painted on. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that, and then we'll come back and we'll start to draw the details on the leaves. My picture is dry now, so what I'm going to do is to start on this side and add some little detail into the leaves and work my way over. Again, you don't want to put your hand in wet paint and smear it. And I've left areas kind of open for the leaves so that they overlap the branches. So I'm going to start there first. And you can use the technique that we talked about with making texture in the tree to draw in some of the details of your, your leaves maybe draw around them a little bit, have one side a little darker than the other side. I'm using an orange color because I see some orange in these leaves here and that gives me an opportunity to just add a little bit more texture into the, the leaves to make them come forward a little bit. Once I have that orange in, then I can come back if I would like to add some yellow and mix that orange in with the yellow and make it not such a strong line. And once I've decided what leaves are going to go over the branches and what leaves are going to be behind the branches, I can come back in and add some details into some of the branches that I left out because now I know where they're, they're going to end. And I can just go through and add a little bit more detail here and there, maybe make it darker. All right, so I'd like you to find an area that you can apply this technique to and then we'll come back and finish up our painting. So as you see I have been putting in some darks and lights, some details into the, the leaves and the last thing I want to do is to add some color down in the bottom here. 
Now there's a couple of ways that you can do it. If you'd like to add a little bit of water and just have a soft texture, you'd put some more water even though you've painted it already. And take your brush, and I would take a smaller brush, and just drop it on there where the wet paint water is, and just move it around and you have some soft details to fill in this bottom area. And again, like last, the texture we were talking about in the leaves here, you can do that same technique where you lay down a, a color just underneath of these different colored leaves, the yellows and the oranges. And you can see that I'm just randomly kind of laying down a very light color of yellow and orange. Maybe even put a little green in there around the bottom base of the tree. And I would have some darks and some lights, not just real light color, but some dark colors in here because this is the shadowed area by this tree. So you want to add a little bit of dark in here to create the, the look of a shadow. And again, after that dries, you can come in with some brighter colors, some more pure colors and less water, and start to just put in individual leaves. So my orange, this area here is drier, so it gives you an idea of how the two textures look with a lot of water or with less water. And I see a little bit of red in this leaf pattern here, so maybe come in with some red. And I'm just altering the colors that I'm using so we have a mixture of those colors in the bottom part of this painting. I'm making dots, little dots or dashes that helps to recreate the texture of the leaves. All right, so we've used the techniques of laying water on top of our page and adding color on top of it to get a smooth, kind of softened look. We've used the technique of going back in with our brush that's really small with the, the paint being a little bit drier and being able to draw more detail. And between those two techniques, you are able to get a lot of different textures. In landscape, that's probably one of the important things is to understand the, the textures that you're looking at. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. I want you to finish yours too. And then when I'm all done, I'll show you the last finished project. So we finished up with our landscape painting and I removed the tape so you can see you have a nice clean edge. It gives you an opportunity to practice textures that you see in landscape painting. The Edward E. Museum has beautiful gardens. We hope that to see some of you later on when we open back up again. But in the meantime, you probably have a beautiful landscape right outside your window, or you can find some photographs that you like and use them to, to paint a masterpiece.